today's video, we're going to talk about UART, the protocol itself, and a few examples on how I actually got the firmware to run on this. So I'm going to go over it. So what is it? It stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, one of the most popular communication protocols. There are so many sub-variants of this, which we'll go into later. But for you to know that UART communication, it comprises of a transmitter and a receiver, TX and RX, as you can see on the diagram here. So for the TX side, the UART transmitter converts parallel data from a device into a serial data stream. And this is transmitted one bit at a time over the communication channel. So we can see the transmitter is connected to the RX, the receiver. And the RX here is connected to the transmitter on this side. And the receiver, the UART receiver, converts the incoming serial data stream back into parallel data, making it understandable to the receiving device. There is one thing to note that when you do make a UART connection, that it's very easy to get these two mixed up. I've done it many times. I'm sure many others do it. And I would always like to put some way in between two. So you can easily disconnect this if you get the connections wrong. Be it a zero ohm link, a solder bridge, some jumper headers, something that's easy, nice, and easy to swap around if you get the pins messed up. But really, firmware should have checked this, and it's a firmware engineer problem, not ours. So don't worry about it too much. Well, this is why I say get an I.O. table, and you won't have this argument. So before we start going into how it works, let's talk about its key features. It's an asynchronous communication, as I said, meaning the data is transmitted without the sender receiver needing to be synchronized with a shared clock signal. Instead, you, as you find out, that they both agreed on a specific baud rate, which defines the speed of data transmission. So with your Arduino, you know, when you started, you know, serial monitor, you had to select that baud rate. That is a UART being converted. Same with the ESP32 boards and many other microcontroller dev boards. They have a USB to UART converter and there's a specific baud rate that's agreed on it. This can be changed from time to time. So there's many different speeds. So you've got 9600, you've got, I think it's 11. Well, it's at 111.5200. Um, there's, I think there's a much slower ones, faster ones, things like that. And it depends on your application, I suppose, on how fast you want it. So to the actual, so this is a frame of UART. And what you'll notice is that there's a start and stop bit. So each data byte transmitted via UART includes a start and stop bit. Start bit indicates the beginning of the data byte and one or more bits signal the end of the data byte. And this is how it provides the synchronization. But as you know, compared to I squared C, SPI, there's a clock involved. So this is how things get synchronized. That's not to say that UART is, you know, there's no clock, which we'll get into, into it. Just keep this in mind, this thing's called UART. And there's LP use art and there's the LP UART, things like that. And uh, then basically those things have a clock signal enabled on them. We'll, we'll talk about it a bit more. So the data bits, the data bits, UART supports various data formats and it's typically seven to eight data bits per byte. And this is chosen that turns the range of characters that can be transmitted. For example, eight bits can represent 256 characters. So you'll see this, this is your, this is your data bit here. And now we're going to speak about how this actually works along before we actually go into the firmware of the device. It's always good to know what you're working with. Also, as I said before, there is a start bit. And when the byte needs to be transmitted, the transmitted UART starts by sending a start bit. This indicates the beginning of transmission. As we said, the data bits, usually eight, eight bits long, are transmitted one by one, starting with the least significant bit and then with the most significant bit. You may wonder what is this parity bit here? It says optional, do I really need to include it? Well, if used, it is an optional, but it helps you in error checking. It can be set to odd, even, mark, space, or no parity. But essentially, this can help you determine if your date is clunky or it's false or, you know. I don't think it's commonly used. To be honest, I think there's other methods that people employ, but it's optional and it's there. Stop bits, one or more stop bits, commonly one or two. So following the data bits, so once everything has been transmitted and you've got your parity, if you did put it in, you need to some way say, okay, this is the end of it. So this is what the stop bit is here for. Afterwards, the UART will return to an idle state and you just wait for the next transmission and the whole cycle repeats itself. But let's go back to here. Let's do an actual example. So let's say device A over here, and this is device B. Let's say A wants, device A wants to send the character A. Just represent it in, in this binary over here. We'll write it down. And it wants to send it over to here too. Then it's going to receive it. So device A starts sending the start bit. So since start bit here goes okay. So this we're now starting a transmission. And now we're going to fill up this data packet with its uh, binary. So going 8, including include what we need to send. And using the UART transmission. Assuming one stop bit. If we're done, we don't need the parity. 
and that's our communication done. What device B will do is as long as it's configured at the same baud rate, so this is a common error that you may have, especially if you're playing around on Arduino that you may not have you set the baud rate in something else in your code, but you set it up in the Arduino software somewhere else. So it's also maybe when you're configuring between two uh, two different devices. When device B is configured at that same baud rate, so you, you agree on 9600, it detects the star bit, it starts reading the data and processes that received binary as the character A. And that's how UART works. It's very quite simple, it's just passing information one another. And that's what you saw in the earlier example to start the video. You know, I was using the ESP32 and I was simply talking to each other through its transmit and receive. It was just waiting for a transmit and received and it told me it received it. And it told me it received it. So it's quite a straightforward, widely used here communication protocol. It allows devices to communicate asynchronously by transmitting data one at a time and you know all of the parts to a to a, your transmission now. So now that you've known this fantastic information, you may be wondering, well, where do I use it? I usually only see I2C sensors, SPI, protocols for screens, you know, where is this actually used from? And it's a good question. We do use the protocol quite a lot, and we use it, a few examples would be these chips here. So, for example, a GPS, this is a GPS module, I think I said connectivity, I used it in a project once, and this was done through UART. The communication to program was done through UART. And one thing I did need to let you know that some of these devices do have a voltage rating or not a, vo a translation voltage. So for this one specifically, during this project, I had no idea at the time that it communicated at 1.8 volts. You can't connect the 1.8 volts straight to 3.3. It does not work like that. You'll need some sort of level shifter in between. But this is why, and I'll show you in the data sheet later, that things you need to look out for when you're looking for this. But it's one of the common things, even with any uh, communication protocol, that you need to look, have a level shifter for the specific things. If one device talks of 5 volts or 1.8 volts, something of the sort, that you need. Then you have a level shifter communicating to your main microcontroller, for example. So there's one thing you see commonly is a GPS application, GSM modules. Another thing you see if you're talking to another microcontroller, let's say you have two microcontrollers on the board, you know, you've got one, you've got an ESP32 and you, you know, it has Wi-Fi capabilities and you know, you want, you wanted it to do a bit more than just using it as a Wi-Fi thing. So you have another STM32 or perhaps you wanted to use two separate and you had this Bluetooth NRG and you wanted to communicate, you wanted the you wanted the Bluetooth functionality. So you decided, okay, I need both of these. Let's, how do I communicate them? You can use UART to communicate through both of them. So even if you had an STM32 and you had this other STM, a blue energy, Bluetooth chip, you could communicate between each other to pass along that data. Let's get into the code and let's see how this is actually written. So we're here in the firmware of our device. This is the simple example I showed you. I've made a few comments into it. And what we're going to do here is look at what, how we've actually went about doing this. So we've included all our main files, our header files that we needed, our main ones. We have defined what pins we're using. This can be found on the datasheet, of course. We have defined a buffer size. So this is where we're going to pass information. The first step, and again, this is all on the documentation of the Espressif website. It's very well documented, is that we need to, we need to set a configuration what are we going to use for this uart application as you can see there is a flow control which we thought mm, maybe we're not too sure on that is and this was what i mean by rs232 the other communication protocols or they, that they make use of uart and what this is is sometimes you can have it on a single line in which you can you can switch between having receive and transmit and this is what the flow control is there for it's very nifty in itself but this is a bit out of the scope of the video but just to let you know that this option does exist and look into it a bit more. So we configure our baud rate, what's our data bits? As I mentioned, we have seven and eight, but eight is typical. We have disabled the parity bit and we state your stop bit one, disable the flow control. Next, we have to pass the UART port in the config. So we're calling upon this and we are saying, okay, we're using UART port number zero because we're using these pins. And now we need to set the pins. So we're saying we are port zero we have our we have defined our transmit our receive pins and we're not using the uh the flow control here so these are the return to send and i think control to send i believe i'll have to double confirm that but if you're not using this usually you are is typically used with these two the transmit and receive we are then need to install the driver so we need to pass along our port what is the buffer size q size you are q in the flag since we're not using any of these we don't need to be concerned about them so we can all set them to zero or null 
again, if you want a bit more information, it's in the data Dimmestressors website, and I'll link it down. And this is where the majority of how we're passing it, and this is how we get our loop. So we're saying we're putting this into an array into a, of our message ping. Okay, so printf sending it. So say okay, we're sending the message. All right, good. So we've sent we're sending message ping. You are at write bytes. You are at number zero message size of. So we're writing the bytes to the UART. What do we need to write? What's the size of this message we need to write? And we're using the size of to just give us whatever size our message is. Now we're passing the incoming message into our buffer. And notice here we've put mem set. So we're clearing the array for messages to avoid junk data. And let's take a look at this a little bit later, but just remember this, that we are clearing the array. You have to think, why would we want to do that, essentially? We're clearing the array of the message. If you think about this coming in over and over again, you know, it could get stacked up. So we want a way of just clearing it for every single time. We're then reading the bytes. And we're saying, okay, so you are number, the port, a pointer to the buffer, so the incoming message, and then we are the data length and our text to wait. So how long before the thing times out? And then we're gonna print the message to confirm it. So that's all there is to it. I've simply connected in between the two TX and RX pins, and this is how we're doing it through here. It's a very, very simple method. Again, you could do the same this with you if you had an actual UART application. You know, so it'll be the same process through and throughout. You may need a little configuring to what data sheet of the chip you're using, but it is the same process overall. Back to this mem set. So let's take a look at an example of where we didn't Clear. So I'm going to comment out this and let's take a look at it. So as you can see that we got a whole bunch of junk data, that data that we didn't need at all, which we think, well, that's no good for us. If you can imagine if we didn't print it out, we have no idea what the data was going to be. So let's put it in with back with the mem set. You can see we get much better. We There is no random filling up of the data anywhere. It is this is what we truly want. So we could see we could make it maybe adjust it a bit, but we get the overall message that we're receiving what we want to see and it's being sent out again. So before we end off the video, I just wanted to speak about a bit more on the LP UART and UART. So these pins, they may require extra pins as the hardware control, the flow control, as we mentioned before. And if you're not careful, you may not be able to implement them correctly. So realistically, you need to look in the issue, make sure you see LP, if you see LP UART, be look into what other pins you may be able to use if you just see UR then you should be okay and make sure you look into the voltage levels that you're looking at if you have a 1.8 volt device versus a 3.3 volt device and we can have a look at let's take up the SAR module as an example so here we have the SAR module the SAR R4 series and this was one I brought up and what we're looking for is is what level it communicates at aha so we're looking at digital inter interfaces pins right down in the in the electrical specifications so we found out that that we're looking at the usb pins sim pins and then we find i2c pin so see that its internal supply for gdi domain is 1.8 so we see that this is using a 1.8 volt uh, um, translation and this is something we need to convert so we could see that you know we have a minimum of 1.17 max 2.10 so this won't be able to communicate with our 3.3 volts and we think oh well we're not using our twitch c and we still look at these other things and you know we still it looks like we, we're going to need a voltage translator either way so this is something you should watch out for when you're using these type of protocols as well to make sure that you can all communicate on the same voltage line as well while we're here we can look at the the extra pins that we're surrounding it. and it seems i got a bit wrong here it's ready to send and clear to send so that's the ones you need to be a bit wary of if you need to configure these so if you do have these extra things you know might as well configure them if you can and just be wary of them that they exist and whilst we're on here i will take a look at usart so we can see that we have so this might be a, be a better one and this is using it says you are but there's a usart where we have a clock we have a clock line to transmit this data so you'll have three pins instead of two for example that's another thing to look out for if you see use our bets not to ignore it and actually pay attention to it and see that you have a clock line to transmit over i presume you could still use uart regularly just without the clock line but if you do need it then be wary of it again this is an io table should have been completed and you shouldn't have this problem if you know it shouldn't be arguing with firm but if you're doing it yourself then yeah this is why i suggest doing it be wary of what pins you're looking for, be wary of the baud rate and things, all these generic things, and hopefully now you can use the UART protocol.